Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Immortality. In the last episode, we made it down to the final nine clips of Ambrosio. Now, before we get into this, I would just very quickly like to say I do apologize for how long it's been in between episodes. Um, my life got my life got rather messy for a little while there. I, I don't want to get too much into it, but um, we had a death in the family. I got sick. I could barely talk. And I I just needed to take a break. And then when I came back, I wanted to catch up on my main Let's Play Mass Effect. I wanted to catch up to that. Um, so yeah, Immortality just ended up falling to the wayside a little bit. I do apologize for that. However, you know, I am back. I am ready and raring to go. I'm very excited to find these, these final few clips. Now, I have been thinking about this. I've been thinking about this a lot because from what I can recall of the book, bearing in mind that they've gotten rid of a lot of the B plot and they've gotten rid of some aspects of the A plot, we've hit all the major scenes. Like, all of the major story beats I would expect to find, we've found. So that has me more than a little bit worried. There are some scenes that I think should be in this that we haven't seen. Um, just, just from, like, a storytelling perspective, like, personally, I think there should be a scene of Ambrosio poisoning Antonia's drink. We've seen him being given the poison from Matilda. We've seen him giving Antonia the drink, but we don't actually see him spiking the drink. I think that should be a scene. I find it odd that at no point did Ambrosio go, hey, Matilda, you look an awful lot like this picture I've got of the Virgin Mary. What's that about? What's that about? It gets mentioned at the end, right at the very end, all the way down here. Where are you? Um, ba ba ba. It would be, okay, over here. Yet in this scene, Matilda, you know, goes up to him and says, oh, I saw that you were jacking off to that picture of the Virgin Mary, so I took her form to seduce you. Like, we've got that reference right at the very end, but, you know, Ambrosio has eyes. He can see that, you know, oh, my friend Matilda looks exactly like this picture. I just find it odd that he wouldn't bring that up to her. Like, let, let's say I've got a friend, Jenny, and I go to the Louvre, I'm stood in front of the picture of the Mona Lisa, and I think to myself, oh my god, that's Jenny. You know, the, the enigmatic smile, the way her hair falls, the lack of eyebrows, that's Jenny. Like, I'm not gonna wait until the afterlife to talk to her about it. I'm phoning her up and saying, have you seen a picture of the Mona Lisa? Do you know that you look identical to her? I find it odd that that is only brought up at the end of the film and nowhere else. So I, I feel like that should be a scene. But again, this, like I, I'm going, ha I'm having to go off feelings rather than, oh yeah, this was a major scene in the book. Therefore we're still missing this. So I'm, I'm more than a little concerned that the rest of the scenes are going to be set dressing. In which case, I think the best way to go about this would be to hunt for the clipboards. All of these scenes are going to involve clipboards. So here's what I'm going to do. I did say I was going to start cutting through. One second. Yeah, I'm going to start cutting through the searching. So I, I think what I may do, I may bank up to like four or five. And then once I've got that, I'll bring you back. We'll watch them all together, and then I'll do another cut, and I'll have the final few. Though so that that is my logic, unless I get very lucky. And yet, yeah, no, that we're into two of everything. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna start cutting from here. See you in a minute. Okie doke, and I have found four new scenes. That didn't take me too long. It took me about twenty minutes. So yeah, yeah, I am glad that I'm cutting through these. So let's let's watch what we found. From the beginning, if you please. 12 Charlie, take four. Action. That serpent was certainly sent by God as a punishment. I know enough scripture to know the serpent is the devil's tool. Remember, your God has saved you. Matilda. Please, call me Rosario, or friend. That is who I am to you. You must be quiet. Your orders are to rest for 48 hours. As your nurse, I insist. Pure in spirits? I'm 
in spirits, it is because I have accomplished something so great. It has expunged my earlier sins. What do you mean? You I cannot tell. As you seem indisposed to sleep, I shall put you to rest with some music. Music? I had them fetch my harp. Before I became a novice, I practiced often. I'm told I play well. Original of your Madonna. I had hoped to keep this secret. Before my life in the Abbey, I had many admirers, believed that I paid them no attention. One was the artist Martin Galuppi. He petitioned me to sit for him, and I was compelled by my parents to agree. He gave the painting to me as a gift. Embarrassed by the blasphemy. Oh. We're good? Okay. We're moving uh, over to the bed now. We'll finish the story there. Okay. Okay, so my my first thought whilst watching her play, it was just a slight nitpick. The strings weren't moving. You could very clearly see that the strings of the harp weren't moving, so that was I, again, I know that's a nitpick. I know that that's a nitpick, but it was taking me out because I'm like, well, clearly she's not playing it. This is just, this is just odd. But no, okay, okay. So he did was, he did ask her like, hang on a minute. Why do you look, okay. Okay, that's a relief. That's a relief. Like I said, <laughs> Ambrosio has eyes. He has eyes to see. I wonder if then... Okay, yeah, I'm guessing that this is the same scene, but from a different angle then, perhaps. Okay, yeah, it was filmed on the same day. Okay, um, the next one we got, if I get a hat, there you are. Oh, no, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, there was a vibration. I will be back to you. Um, where? There was a vibration. See, um, it's taken me a minute to get into it. The vibrations, we can't forget about them. From, no, that's the end. That, there we go, from the beginning. Mary didn't wear blue. And she wasn't a virgin. That's blasphemy. Oh, you have no idea. Yeah, she's she's mentioned this before that n not only did she play the role of Jesus, she also played the role of Mary, but the Virgin Mary and Mary Magdalene, who was a, a sex worker that Jesus hung out with, apparently they were one in the same. Um, interesting. Interesting as always. And again, let's... I'm just going back to make sure that this takes us into the original scene and not further in. Yeah, okay, back to the original, okay. Okay, now, back down, oh god, where were you? You! 
beginning. Forty Delta, take four. And action. If I need you, Miss Hilda, I will call. Ambrosio, it is not lost on me that what passion you had for me has been exhausted. I happily give up the claims of the mistress. I may retain those of the friend. As a friend, I see that you are upset by something. Oh, that was cool. That was, I like that. I, oh, I, I want to watch that again. I want to watch that again. I, Delta, take four. Part of me feels like that was a practical effect because you can see the, you can see the flower, like obviously that's not a real flower. You can see that is not a real flower, that is fabric. And you can see at the end it, it's vibrating slightly, like, like there's someone holding it up and their hand is shaking. I... Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out if this is a practical effect or something they're adding in. give up the claims of the mistress. I may retain those of the friend. As a friend, I see that you are upset by something. So, you could... I think you could do that with strings, perhaps. Not the not the changing of the colour. That could be um, lighting. Or may maybe they're making the colour more vibrant, you know, with a with an after effect. You know, when, when they're editing the, the clips together. But um, if there were a string, you know, inside the vase, and then when she brushes it, you pull on the string, and that straightens everything up and pulls the petals taut, maybe... I th I think that's how you could do it. The the color change. Yeah, you could you could it, you could use strings to pull it taut. The color changing. I think that would either be lighting or something they're adding in afterwards in editing. Happily give up the claims of the mistress. I may retain those of the friend. Oh, that is that is cool. That is a cool shot. I like that. Arthur, Arthur was right. He did have a good eye. His talent may have been waning, but he did have a good eye. And that, that is an excellent example of it. Now then. Where was, there were two more that I found. Yeah, right here. Forty nine Delta, take two. Okay, and so we did we did get a shot of him poisoning the drink. Okay, that's good. That's good. And from here on out I'm like, I have no idea. It's, it's all gonna be establishing shots. Those those were my two ideas. For potential scenes after a oh, hello. Action. Delta eight. Fifty three Delta, take two. Okay, yeah, yeah, another establishing shot. Okay, but with, with that, we are down to the final five. I think my plan for focus on the tail slates is going well. Um, again, I'm going to put in another cut here. When I return, we will have the final five clips. See you in a minute. Okie doke, and I am back. Now that, that took me a fair bit longer. I would say that took me close to around 35 minutes. I have found another four. I wanted to save the last clip. I wanted that to be its own thing. However, I have I have found four more. Let's see what they are from the beginning. All right, we're just going to roll on this one. And action. 
say this trick is that these pleasures, which at first may seem equal to that offered by God in heaven, over time reveal their emptiness, regret, and guilt. And the only pleasures left are the harlot and the whore. That magic that the poet speaks so highly of is soon just the rotting of animals in the street. So you're thinking about the incredible sex you had last night. Robert, quick, come over here so she can look at you. Go. Satan's trick is that these pleasures which at first may seem equal to that offered by God in heaven, over time, reveal their emptiness, regret and guilt, are the only pleasures left of the harlot and the whore. That magic that the poet speaks so highly of is soon just the rotting of animals in the street. That work done? We got it. Cut. Clarissa, you're done for the day. You sure you don't want me to hang around? Don't sleep. Twenty-seven apples. Take one. Oh, that was interesting. That was interesting. So it, it seems like, um, because I, I heard both John and Arthur in that scene. I heard the pair of them. So it, it seems like Arthur was okay with John directing this scene. And at the beginning there, John was doing what Arthur does. Arthur does this a lot. He shouts at the actors. They're in the middle of the scene and there's Arthur in the background being like, do this. It's like you're having an orgasm. Do this. Like that, that is not good direction in my opinion. It's, it, it's micromanaging. It's not allowing the actors to do their job, which is, you know, do doy acting if if they're starring in a hollywood movie they probably are proficient at acting you don't need to shout instructions at them and john starts off he's doing what arthur does he's like you're thinking about the great sex you had last night and then he stops and he's like actually no robert you come here so that you're in her eye line and he just lets marissa do what marissa does which is act he allows her to do her job and I think he got a far better reaction from her. That smile. That smile at the end there when um, when Robert was saying like, oh, it's like the rutting of animals in the streets. That was good. And you can tell that Arthur is pissed about this. You can tell. Let me... Yeah, we, we see here Robert and um, John... They were the ones who advocated that Sophia should be in the front of the shot. Yeah, let me just favor that. Um, yeah, I think... I, I think at this stage, potentially, um, Arthur... You know, maybe he's quietly resigned to the fact that the set is pulling away from him, the actors and... You know, the cameramen and women, are they're taking their direction from John. But what what is really interesting about that, um, Arthur sent Marissa away. You know what, let's, let's go back a bit. Yeah. That worked, John? We got it. Cut. She takes her direction from John. Not the director from John. She's looking to him for guidance, and Arthur doesn't like it. Marissa, you're done for the day. Yet you can see her face. She's like, wait, what? You're dismissing me? You're dismissing me? Because we've seen in earlier scenes, Marissa always seems to be on set. There was a scene between um, Sophia and Robert, and after it finishes, Sophia says, can we go again? I had Marissa in my eye line. So Marissa just seems to be hanging about on set and that wasn't a problem until she started getting a bit too close to John and she started looking to him for guidance, 
not Arthur. Arthur has shown he wants to sculpt Marissa. He he believes Marissa to be an 18-year-old girl. He doesn't realize that, yeah, no, that 18-year-old girl died many, many years ago. You are looking at someone wearing her skin who is far older than you. Much, much older than you. And you're not treating her with respect. Whereas with um, with Marissa and John, in, in a way... How, how do I put this? Arthur tried to dominate Marissa from the get-go. We see that in, in the early interviews where he's got his hand on the back of her neck. That is a power play move. He is saying, like, you are mine. You are here. I am controlling you. I have your neck in my hands. That is, that is a very vulnerable position for Marissa to be placed in. He is showing domination. John's never really attempted to dominate Marissa. Quite the opposite, in fact. He's always sort of gone along with what she's wanted. She kept looking at the camera and John's there being like, yeah, no, no, it's sexy, it's cool, let's do it, it's modern. He's followed her lead. In a way, I kind of view John as... Here's the thing, John John was going after someone who he thought was 18. That is creepy. I, I think it would be wrong of me to say that it wasn't. No, it is creepy. He, he thought that Marissa was a very young woman and he entered into a sexual relationship with her. That is creepy. However, in a way, I view Marissa as the instigator. And again, she's not actually 18. She's however many thousands of years old. In real life, if this was a real situation, let's, you know, like, tra you know, time traveling storytellers don't exist in real life. If this were real life, Marissa is 18. Her brain is not properly formed. She cannot, you know, the, the human brain doesn't properly, um, you know, it hasn't fully grown until like, what, the age of 24, 25, somewhere around there. And Marissa's brain is not fully developed enough the, the onus would be on John. You are a grown-ass adult. Don't fuck 18-year-olds. Yeah, she's legal. Don't do that. Don't do that. But in the context of this story, I view John as the innocent. Marissa was coming on to him. Again, in real life, you say, no thank you, child. No thank you. Be gone from here. Get. No. You cannot have my dick. Like, that. that is the appropriate response in real life. In terms of this story, John, John was some buffoon. Like, let's, let's be honest, John was some dipshit who followed his dick and ended up in a relationship with a domineering, immortal god creature who can only view relationships as slave and master. Like, that's... Like I said... If, if this story were taking place in real life, I would have a very different response to John. But considering the story we are being told, I feel significantly more sympathy for John than I do Arthur, because John never displayed any desire to dominate Marissa. Whereas Arthur, from the very moment he met her, he was like, I'm gonna sculpt you, I'm gonna dominate you. Wait, you won't accept that? Oh, well, you can't hang around on set now because you're taking your direction from John, and I don't like that. Even though I've been cool so far about you hanging around on set and absorbing everything, I don't like that you're taking your direction from him, so get off my set. But you can see in her face she's upset by this. You sure you don't want me to hang around? She looks to John. She's looking to John like he knows. Look at that face. That is the face of he knows. Don't play. I've gotten in trouble for this, the prick. 27 apples, take one. Mm. Interesting that we see John's directing style developing, even here. Now then, where? Where, pray tell? The issue is that they all... Now, oh, there we go, there's one of them. Yeah, because most of them are now tail slates. I'm like, which one was it? Where are all the new scenes? 41 apples, take one.
Marissa, you good? Joan, can I have my lead actress for the shop she's in? Here, rolling. And action. Follow me. And cut. Happy, John? Ecstatic. Good. One more to be safe. You're scared. She is scary, but not for the reasons you think. I, oh, and again, Arthur's being like, okay, let's go, let's go. And Marissa's hanging around with John. She's busy with him. She's not paying any attention to Arthur and that pisses him off. Ooh. Okay, here's one. Oh, hello. Fifty five Delta, take one. Okay, so yeah, that is um that is after Antonia has been stabbed in the crypt. So that that is the indication that yes, yeah, she wasn't dead. Not only is she not dead, but she also grabbed Rosario's um, rosary or his cross, whatever you want to call it. She grabbed that off of him when he stabbed her. So she has proof that, yeah, Father Father Ambrosio did this to me, the prick. Ooh, nice. And then I think, yes, it was Delta, you. Take three. 42 Delta, take three. And action. Cut. Print it. Okay, and that is um that is where Matilda uh calls forth the devil. Yeah, literally it's it's this scene. Put it to Apple, take one. Let's just let it go on a little bit further, but yeah. So that's, that's that scene, okay. Okie doke. And with that, we are down to the final shot. I'm so intrigued to see what is gonna be my final scene. You know, whether it's some, you know, little five second clip or whether it's gonna be something longer. You know, I'm, I'm excited, I'm excited you know, to bring an end to Ambrosio. So, again, see you in a moment. Okie doke, and I am back. That didn't even take me five minutes. That didn't even take me five minutes. Okay, hello. Hello, Reaso. what are you? Center 41, Riazzo. And action. Follow me. So you descend the stairs, until the leaves, you walk through passages, skulls and caskets, the lantern light catches your eyes, you come to the cabin, blank face Marissa, your lack of expression next to Ambrosio makes you strong, now we enter the chamber. Undress. All in there describes the sob of Juliet as a new type of human. A woman with wings who will renew the universe. Have that strength, that moral power, as you stand naked. No shame. Now, the ritual. Three human fingers. An agnus stay. Now, the dagger. Dark smoke. A 
crack of thunder. The ground shakes. He comes. The ground is still. Strange music fills the air. Satan appears. An unearthly beauty. The fallen angel. Et à voir. Et à voir. Ta. 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 Zroy zi wazi. Kyut zi. Niam zi. Drol zi nazies. Satan vanishes. Lucifer was unhappy to help a monk, but I compelled him. I have exhausted my currency. In the future, you will have to bargain with them yourself. But today, we have what we need. Hold this constellated myrtle. With it in your hand, every door will open to you. Tomorrow night, use it to access Antonia's chamber. Then breathe on it three times and pronounce her name. She will enter a deep sleep that will not leave her till morning. You may satisfy your desires fully. When she wakes, she will perceive her dishonor but be ignorant of its cause. With this service, I have proven to you my friendship and lack of jealousy. Matilda, Soon I... it will be dawn. We must return to the Abbey before we are missed. Very nice. We will make a Matilda out of this Rosario. Oh, oh, that was a fantastic scene to end on. That was fantastic. Oh, my... Again, again, by aiding you in the rape of this woman, I have proven my friendship. I'm so, it's, it's so absurd, I can't help but laugh. It's so absurd. And by aiding you in the rape, I have proven that I am not jealous. And Ambrosio's just there like, yeah, that makes sense. Ambrosio, you dipshit. You absolute dipshit, sir. Oh, I just... Very quickly, I want to talk about that final line that Arthur says. We will make a Matilda out of this, Rosario. She's looking at Robert like, hmm, that's a strained smile. That is a strained smile. It doesn't meet her eyes. He's saying, oh yeah, I'm going to mold you. We will make Matilda out of this Rosario. You're so sweet and innocent. You've never had a sexual or deviant thought in your life. And she's looking at Robert like, can you believe this prick? Can you? I'm going to smile because I don't want to get fired. I'm going to smile and play polite. But this is not a genuine or sincere smile. Can you believe this guy? He's talking nonsense. To be fair, Marissa and Robert often share glances like that. It, it's often when, um, when Arthur is talking about Marissa's body. During one of the sex scenes, again in the, um, in the rehearsal sequences, it, it's when he says, no, 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 this won't do. We need to get a look at your tits, my dear. And Robert and Marissa share a look at like, I can't believe he's talking to you like that. Yeah, no, neither can I. What an asshole. I, oh. But there we go. There we go. I do believe that is Ambrosio finished. Let's just do a quick we check. In case there's anything I haven't watched. Yeah, this this was the story of a director not treating his cast and crew with respect. He believed that he knew everything. Any suggestions were silly or, you know, oh, why, why should I treat the actors with respect? Why should I treat them with, you know, common human decency? No, 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 fuck that. Fuck that noise. And eventually the cast and crew said, yeah, no, we're, we're going to do things our way. We're going to do things our way, fuck you. And he ended up a pariah on his own set. I, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Now, I, I can see from my timer, I've, I've only had my timer on 
during scenes, you know, that I'm actually going to include in the episode. So I have about 15 minutes left. Now, I did pick up a fair few new scenes in Minsky. So we'll have a watch of these. I do want to re-watch all the Minsky scenes in my free time. Just again, just in case any new hidden scenes have cropped up. But I think to, to end off today's episode, okay, aha, there we are. Yeah, let's let's start watching all of the new Minsky films. You know, I, I will say, going after the clipboard scenes, it did feel a little bit cheaty, but it has opened a lot of new scenes across Minsky and Two of Everything, so that, that was good. 36 Alpha, take two. Action. What can you do? What should you do? Are there two parts to Goodman's mind or just one? What do you want? Are you in love with Marissa? Are you really? You have to let Olga go. But what then? Drink the coffee and go. Cut! Do you want one with the background? We have them here. No, I like seeing Goodman alone. And there we have it again. We have that again with John. He uses the character names instead of the actors, except for Marissa. He's talking about, oh, you had to let Olga go. Are there two sides to Goodman or one? Do you love Marissa? Not do you love Franny? Do you love Marissa? I think that, I, I, how do I put this? I, I don't know if John is okay with Marissa's nature. Again, because Marissa slash the one can only view relationships as slave and owner, you know, any idea of like being committed to her, it, that's like, oh, you're stifling my freedom. You're stifling my freedom. So she has all of these affairs. And I, I still can't tell whether or not Johnny's okay with that. It, it, like, I, I think I've said this before. It could just be the fact that she's now fucking, um, oh my God, it's been such a long while. What's your name? Carl, there we go. Carl Greenwood, something along those lines, I believe. Um, yeah, it could just be the fact that she's screwing Carl and John is like, he's he works on set, he's your co-star. You're you're doing it on our doorstep. You are you are shitting where we sleep. That's not good. That's you know that people are gonna get hurt. People are gonna get hurt in this situation. It's not like her going out to a bar and not coming home until 6 a.m. He knows she's fucked someone. He knows she's had sex with someone else, but it's someone that she's never going to see again. This is a guy that she sees all the time and that John sees all the time. It, it's a recipe for disaster. Scene 2B, take four. I will keep running this until we've knocked the charisma out of you, Carl. Goodman is as handsome as you are, but he's less aware of it. Action. All done? Uh, a couple hundred pages left. All that reading, you'll go blind. I personally believe you learn more psychology in a week working tables than you do reading a textbook. Deviant psychology, though? This is New York. How about a wage in? Another game. Next customer walks in. We both write down which table they're going to pick. Deal. Where you get your shirts? They're nice. Kensington Taylor's on 12th Street. I picked some up for my brother. They're expensive. That's OK. My brother's more of a tracksuit and vest kind of guy. Hey, Tony. 
I got a table for you right over here. Yep, right here. <laughs> I'll get you some coffee, okay? You don't have feelings. All spare and level walk. You're the deviant. Ugh. Anyhow, I don't date cops. Ring, ring. Hey, good man. I'll call for you. Cut. That's good. Ready to move on to the standing close-ups. Miss Perkins, you can flirt with Carl now. Okay. <laughs> hey, you need some change? Buy your brother a shirt. Oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> that was cute. I, I, I think I would agree with her. You would learn more about psychology in, you know, working retail, any kind of retail job, than from a textbook. Textbooks are good, but at some point you need first-hand experience. You need to get down into it, into the nitty-gritty, and you'll just never get that experience with a textbook. That was... that was cute. That was cute. Good job, Miss Perkins. And you? Take one. 41 Abracadabra, take one. Action. Read it. They perverted you. She broke you, Carl. Got the lighter? thing you've ever done. Don't burn your fingers. Cuts. Let's go again. We get about 10 minutes of light left. Okay, so this, if I remember correctly, we actually saw John rehearsing this scene earlier. When they, I think they were scouting for locations. And Marissa, yeah, I remember this because Marissa was like, oh, you're not as handsome as Carl. And I was like, that's your man. Don't bring him down. Bring him up. Say you're better looking than Carl. I, oh... And again, I just want to note, he didn't say she's broken you, Goodman. He said she's broken you, Carl. The way that John uses names is very interesting. Very interesting. Huh? Okay, just just another establishing shot. Goodman exploring the scene. Okay, so we've got that, but yeah, let's let's go from here. Let's go in actual order. Scene twenty B, take one. can't talk now. So hold up one hand for no, two for yes. Got that? It's gonna take a little while to dry. Shall we have some fun while we wait? Twenty 
understand me and Minsky, you have to know what it feels like to completely give yourself over to another person. Are you ready to do that? be quite freeing to give yourself over to another person. Whether you live or die, it's in their hands. That takes the weight off. Breathing is a reflex action. We're never conscious of how close we are to just dropping dead and dying until we have to think about it. Art is about being aware of our mortality and then transcending it. You're obsessed with dead bodies. You spend all day with them. You're obsessed with the finality of death. But art is about looking beyond it. We know that death is just a transformation from one state to another. You're about to shoot a handful of your seed inside me, and that's new life. Though it won't amount to much. The French call me orgasm. The petite mort. And when you die, when you give yourself to another individual, you do die. As an individual, you give yourself to them. You become part of the work. Part of their work. And Wolf. Art. I, so at first I thought that was a scene between um, Franny and Minsky. No, okay. She's introducing Goodman to their world. Um, I just... I, again, I, I understand that, you know, the, the restriction of, um, you know, oxygen or the airways, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, oxygen deprival. I, I understand that that's a kink. I understand that. No, not for me. I like being able to breathe. I enjoy being able to breathe. And I think I... Because at, at this stage, Goodman is possessed by um the other, I believe. Let's see, it's... Where are you? It was... I'm looking for... Yeah, right here. Right here. This is where the other has taken over Carl. So yeah, at this stage, it's the other in there. And I think that Marissa may have been restricting his oxygen as a like, hey, I know it's you. You know that you know that I know that it's you. Let's not play pretend. Let's not bullshit. And I don't want you on my set. Because he looks that... <laughs> Carl don't look so good. Carl don't look so good right now. <laughs> and again, this, this is why intimacy coordinators are vital on a set. Someone should have stepped in to say, Marissa, let fucking go. <laughs> I don't really 
can know if a woman is fine. It was so long ago. I wasn't trying to kill you. You were, I mean. Yeah, that. The one clearly hates him, but at the same time, like, she's kissing him so lovingly. Their relation- it's toxic. Their relationship is toxic, but they keep- They keep coming back to each other because they're alike. They're in a world surrounded by people who live for a fraction of their lifespan. Their primarily their primary use for humans is as meat suits. They can't connect to them in a genuine way. No matter how much the one might try, she'll never understand. But they understand each other. The one and the other, they understand each other. Therefore they have to be together, but they can't. Because the one absolutely hates him. But I think on some level she loves him at the same time. It oof. Oof. Now again there there was a vibration. So let's let's just see where this brings us to. Okay, yeah. Okay, so that's that's the original scene. Good stuff. Alrighty then. I am gonna bring this episode to a close right here. In the next one, we continue watching the scenes that we found in Minsky. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.